Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. In today's vlog, I want to talk about balancing minimalism with stockpiling. Stay tuned to the end when I show more clips from my visit to the Toronto Vintage Clothing Show. When the first lockdown was announced, I was sent home from work and it was on a Friday. Up until that point, I always shopped when needed so I only had a few days worth of food at home. I live in a small home with no garage, attic or basement, so I don't have a lot of storage space. I went straight to my local grocery store. The scene there has stayed with me to this day. All the fruit and veg was cleared out, even the onions and garlic. The shelves were stripped of canned food and staples like flour. Ditto the meat aisles. There were long queues and desperation was in the air. It was just a couple steps from a full-blown riot. I am sure that a lot of people carry trauma from that time. I decided that I was never going to let that happen again. Over time, I did my best to accumulate a few extra cans of food, a few extra packages of pasta and rice whenever I could. What I am showing you is laughably small compared to someone who has been maintaining a stockpile for years. It's been a battle to maintain a tidy and organized home, which you can hear about in my previous video, Failing at Minimalism, so the sudden about face was a concern for me. At first, I just stored everything in boxes on the floor, which was an eyesore. Two years later, there's inventory and stock at the grocery store, but I have noticed that when something is out of stock, it takes a very long time for it to come back. Some stores are better than others. Plus, there's been a huge escalation in price, which makes it hard to accumulate extra. My main concern is my fur babies. Everyone knows how finicky they are, and I can't find certain foods easily. So suddenly giving them something different would just end in disaster. Their dry food shot up $10 in price, which was very upsetting. Luckily, after several years of trying, I had successfully transitioned my girl cat to eating wet food instead of exclusively dry. Please see my previous video on how I did that. By getting them used to eating different brands and flavors, if I can't find one, then it isn't such a huge concern. I couldn't find their usual brand of litter anymore, so I had to switch to a more expensive brand. Same goes for their favorite crunchy treats. A lot of people forget to maintain an adequate supply of food for their pets, so I offer to you to consider that issue if you have pets. Even now, if I only see two left of something on a shelf, I am loath to take all that's left because I think about someone who is in desperate need. I'll just take one and leave the other. Please let me know if you have noticed inflation and supply chain issues in your area. I don't want to apply rules of minimalism to the stockpiling of food and necessities as these are extraordinary times, but I don't want to fall into hoarding and living in fear either. I still want to enjoy living and not obsess over groceries. My best advice is to be realistic. It is horrendously expensive to accumulate a stockpile within a short period of time. Look at your budget and stay within it. Just add a little bit extra when you can or if you see a good sale. Look at your storage space and how much space you can set aside for your pantry. Only purchase food that you know you will eat. There's no point in buying food you detest simply just to have food in your pantry. If you have any further tips or suggestions, please leave them below. Thank you so much for watching.